Um, and I'd like to uh, discuss with all of you um, live migration uh, of a virtual machine over CXL uh, memory. Um, <clears throat> and um, the, um, the BOF uh, preamble um, is along the lines of, um, I want to give sort of a high level uh, overview um, through the slides and then, um, you know, at the end uh, or whenever um, um, I'm interested in brainstorming ideas or discussing. Um, and also, uh, I'd like to point out that I'm just starting to tackle this problem, so I do not have uh, all the answers yet. Um, and another note is the project assumes CXL 3.0 spec uh, devices with uh, shared memory features. Um, and I'm using uh, VM as an example, but um, this concept could be applied to like containers or processes. Um, <clears throat> and um, so here's sort of the um, uh, um, optimistic theoretical uh, goal of the project. Um, uh, comparing it to uh, traditional live migration, uh, it's uh, basically done through um, um, uh, four different uh, steps. Uh, we, we have a, a pre-copy section uh, where we copy the memory over um, from the um, source to the, hyper, uh, to the target hypervisor. Um, and then we quest the, um, the VM and uh, we do a secondary copy of, you know, uh, pages that have been hit um, while the migration is happening. And then um, we unquest on the, um, on the target hypervisor. Um, <clears throat> the uh, new migration, um, the, the goal is to actually use um, migrate pages uh, between uh, CXL nodes and then pass the VM uh, by reference through a, a handoff. Um, so um, we'd remove like uh, the need to freeze memory, you know, the quest and second copy, uh, because we're redirecting where we're taking page faults. Um, and also uh, aim to make uh, VM live migration as instantaneous as multitasking, uh, where VM migration could occur um, in between allocated uh, processor slices. So for example, um, the vCP is done with a slice on the source hypervisor, the next slice would be on the uh, target hypervisor. Um, so those are um, all like, you know, uh, theoretical uh, goals of the project. Um, and I just want to sort of introduce the, the, the basic topology that uh, I'm referring to throughout this. Um, we, we have a traditional uh, CPU plus memory uh, um, uh, NUMA node, and then we have a CXL device, uh, which is seen as a separate uh, compute-less uh, NUMA node, um, and those two are connected over a CXL switch. Um, so first step of the migration uh, is to decouple uh, the VM memory from the compute. So we migrate the VM memory onto the compute-less uh, node uh, through uh, migrate pages. Um, and then um, at this point, uh, VM is live and executing and um, um, loads and stores from this v vCPU could be happening on your CXL device or uh, your traditional uh, uh, NUMA node memory uh, while this is uh, going on. Um, and then when decoupling is complete, um, the, the, the VM CPU is executed on the traditional, you know, NUMA node CPU, uh, but VM uh, memory footprint is on the uh, CPU-less uh, NUMA node. Um, and so all the CPU, uh, vCPU loads and stores are redirected to the CXL mem device. Um, so at this point, the, the memory is physically stored uh, on a CXL mem device uh, through a switch. And um, uh, we uh, use like um, set memory, uh, mem policy or uh, similar uh, to prevent pages uh, from migrating uh, back out of the CXL uh, mem device. Um, and also at this uh, point in time, uh, the VM is uh, live and executing. And then um, the, this is the second part of the topology. Um, so we throw an additional hypervisor uh, accessing the same uh, CXL um, mem device where RVM is stored. Uh, so we'll call, you know, uh, this new hypervisor the target and the original one 
the source hypervisor. And so uh, then we, the next step is the handoff, and this is probably uh, the, the hairiest of them all and where are, you know, the most uh, dragons, um, uh, no pun intended or intended. Um, and so the, the step is, uh, is to sort of recreate the compute portion of the VM on the target uh, hypervisor and destroy it on the source. Uh, so in, in a perfect world, uh, that would be as simple as a process context switch when uh, uh, your uh, processor time slice on the target for the vcpu is done you're stored in memory and then the context is simply restored on the target hypervisor um, this would require the hypervisors to um, have a way to uh, cooperate on on this shared memory um, and there would be a need for some kind of uh, in-memory uh, handoff ABI between the hypervisors uh, to hand this uh, VM uh, off. Um, and then the, uh, you know, the, the final step would be to recouple uh, the VM uh, compute and VM memory. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, um, at, at this point, the VM compute is, uh, and the memory are still split. Uh, one, uh, the execution is on a traditional uh, NUMA node, uh, memory and CPU, but uh, the load uh, and stores are, are going to the CXL mem device. So uh, we want to merge those back and we start migrate pages um, from the CXL mem device uh, into onto the traditional NUMA uh, CPU plus mem. And at this point, uh, VM is uh, live migrating, uh, I mean, live and executing. Um, and then, uh, you know, recouple is complete so uh, it's fully on the uh, local traditional luma node so all your loads and stores are local uh, to close memory and uh, you know vm is executing um and um that's that's uh, sort of the gist of it um i've added some information to the slides um uh, for people that are interested in following or contributing or helping or um uh, have questions um, and um, it's open for discussion, and we can go uh, back and forward uh, through the slides uh, if there is a particular thing that people want to discuss. And I'm sure there there will be uh, you know uh, many flies in, in the ointment. Hey, so this is can David. I make a comment? Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is John Groves from Micron. Um, so in CXL 3.0 and forward. Uh, shareable allocations have a tag and by default they will surface as DAX devices that are findable by the tag and I think the details of that aren't established yet but um, so there's a really elegant way to migrate a VM if you have homed that VM on the tagged capacity which is the same thing as homing a v you know putting a VM backed by a, a DAX device because that DAX device can be surfaced at another node. So the VM, you can actually pause it. You have to make sure the cache gets flushed. Um, and then you can just restart the VM against the memory image on another node. VMs work this way. Processes in containers, much harder because you can't, that I know of, back a process or a container by like a DAX instance. Yeah, perfect. Uh, that's good information. Uh, I'll actually uh, uh, read up a little bit of, uh, on this. I um, I wasn't aware of this, and so um, awesome suggestion. Um, cool. So, yeah, I mean, so yeah, you don't. There's the opportunity to not even move the memory on this if it's if you can back something like a VM by effectively DAX memory. If it, but the you know. Processes and containers are still much harder. There's probably some performance implications involved with that, but uh, I, mean, I would agree that's probably a pretty clean mechanism to start with. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, you'd, you'd be motivated. You'd be. I'm sorry. One more thought. You'd, you'd be motivated not to have hardware cache coherency enabled in this case, because. Uh, because that's expensive and you're not really doing something that you need hardware cache coherency for, except at the handoff. So you would have to, you might have to do 
something that makes everybody really smile. Lots of uh, write back and validates <laughs> in order to get it everything to be guaranteed that everything from host one is flushed before host two uh, starts. But. Uh, yeah, and so this, um, uh, yeah, this would be kind of the, the, the mechanism of a, a sort of a key, for lack of a better word, uh, canning the VM and then re rehydrating on the on the secondary host, right? And that's why you'd have you wouldn't work for like processes or containers. Correct. We have right. a question in the room. So yeah, this is David. I was I was just wondering, like, w what do you think about like pass through devices that would be using VFIO or whatsoever and pinning the pages such that you cannot migrate them? And how would that work with like in your setup? Or don't you just not care about like pass through devices? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's the case. Uh, um, we serve about two hundred thousand customers, but uh, we don't do forms of pass through. So. Um, Definitely, it's not something that uh, you would be able to use if you're uh, using pastor. Thanks. The, the piece of this that we can't do can't do today that I thought was interesting that was this idea of starting off in malloc based normal typical DDR and then migrating to CXL and then migrating back out. Do you see that as a primary use case, or do you think things can just live in CXL all the time? Um, in, of course, this is kind of, um, everybody uses their own tools differently, uh, but the, um, the uh, sort of use case that uh, I'm thinking of, thinking of uh, these uh, CXL devices are used primarily for migration in between uh, hosts. Um, um, there's a, uh, you know, in my slides, uh, I have extra slides at, at the bottom, there's a, um, let me just switch to that um so i have uh you know a clustering and um this sort of a load balancing and um, you know that that i guess that, that's um uh, what relates to your point so um if, if for for these slides anybody that wants them uh you can just go to nil dash migration.org and scroll all the way to the bottom and uh, you can download Slides. No, I'm sorry. Did, did that did that answer your question? I guess the question is more along the lines of: Do you think that's a primary use case, or 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 you're just designing this based on like is CXL is only a transport for migration and not not a place to pull your memory and have to have consistent persistent access to it. Yeah, so uh, like first use case is primary uh, migration, yes. Um, and that's the, the case that uh, um, I'm focusing on. Um, the case where you persistently have uh, VMs there, uh, you know, which was I was saying in the clustering or the uh, uh, load balancing, um, I feel that is a little bit of a uh, more difficult and advanced problem than the live migration. So if you have the live migration work seamlessly, then uh, that secondary use case scenario where these uh, sit uh, in CXL uh, memory uh, uh, only or exclusively um, <clears throat> becomes much easier. Just a suggestion, probably instead of doing pre-copy cycle with the Essentially, you demote uh, every VM pages to CXL and then you promote them back. So probably it would be more efficient to do a cycle of post copy and then only the cold pages that remain is still not copied uh, using the post copy migration. Uh, demote only them to CXL and then start moving uh, vCPUs from uh, one host to another and then you can promote uh, like a small uh, piece of data from CXL back to DRAM on uh, the new node. Uh, so you mean to uh, basically do the migration over network and then uh, just synchronize that small piece over CXL? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean that's definitely an option. Um, what I'm trying to, uh, what I'm uh, sort of the goal is to have the 
the VM running uh, constantly and um, uh, uh, decrease the amount of steel that the customer experiences uh, uh, by doing live migration. Um, so um, I think if um, we're going through CXL mem, uh, you know, the VM can, can be executed most of the time during this migration. Um, and if we're transferring things over the network, um, then uh, um, <clears throat> uh, that's, I guess, not, not necessarily true. Uh, just now, I, uh, regarding to the whether we can make uh, sex hour memory persistent for a guest, I was wondering whether uh, it would be a very interesting use case. For example, if we have a memory tiering already for a bad metal. So we have uh, DRAM, we have uh, CXR uh, with distance, with uh, all the no matter uh, latency or throughput information, we can make a decision. It means we have a mixture of uh, memory types on bad metal. And actually, it, I think maybe it would be interesting to have similar pattern for a guest so that uh, we have a large chunk of CXR memory directly assigned to the guest without, uh, uh, I mean, permanently. And also some part of DRAM, maybe a few gigs just to put a kernel, kernel pages and uh, important information from the guest for the guest. Uh, it looks similar to uh, bare metal in this case. And when we migrate, we don't really need to do new map balancing uh, to do the extra step. And basically, what we need to do is to just deliver the CXR uh, assigned memory to the other host. In the meantime, we just migrate a few gigabytes of the DRAM. Uh, I was just wondering whether, whether you have thought about that or maybe it would be a good idea or not. Um, so uh, this is, uh, uh, if I'm understanding correctly, with like CXL uh, 2.0, um, where you would be um, um, unplugging or binding uh, 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 different logical devices to virtual ports. Am I understanding? Uh, my um, my, next, uh, my question was uh, whether we can just have part of the CXR memory being part of the gas memory permanently. Uh, because it's really, a, to me, it's really a similar model to when we have CXR memory to the bare metal. Because we have some of the DRAM, some of CXR, and we have uh, to make a decision. So just to comment oh, on okay, that, I think it. at, at, at S plus 23, there was a paper on doing exactly that. So you would like, you would predict how much cold memory your guest has, and you would give it like real DRAM and CXL memory and expose it as that to the guests, so the guests would be using auto numa or whatsoever. Yeah, thanks. I think that's just that uh, it can avoid the numa balancing for most of the memory, so it's, it's probably good. So, um, can I ask a question? Um, uh, yes, go ahead. And just sorry, everybody, I, I seem to have a lot of like buff with the sound, so I, I am not hearing everything. Uh, so uh, I might have to ask uh, you to repeat. Okay. Um, so we've been actually working on um, VM live migration over this aggregated memory, not CXL, but uh, closely related IBM uh, technology um, for the last year or so. And we have a working prototype and we've evaluated um, how it works, like from just in one direction. Um, and it's actually quite astounding. Um, the, the way you describe um, it, it should work, it, it will work this way. And then we've seen um, that the uh, performance um, compared to traditional migrations, especially um, concerning uh, the performance of the workload within the virtual machine um, is, is a great benefit. So CXL um, and disaggregation uh, as a concept here is really a great benefit for this, uh, this kind of tech technology. And we have extended uh, QEMU um, on, on IBM technology to, to implement this. Yeah, and uh, so um, my, my goal uh, right now that there's no CXL 3.0 devices. So mm. um, um, I want to get to a point where I can emulate um, a CXL uh, 3.0 mem device uh, and attach to uh, hypervisors yeah. and um, just try to uh, get this basic uh, migration going, which is just between uh, uh, two uh, instances. Hmm. So maybe we can chat afterwards because you, you might be interested in looking at our setup. Um, it's not CXL, uh, absolutely. but it's, it's the same. 
basically the same. Yeah, absolutely. Please, uh, my contact is in the slides, and um, uh, yes, uh, uh, I'll be glad to check. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I was ask Andrea, is, is your solution have kernel components that are upstream, or is it uh, done without um, that? We don't modify the, the kernel at all. It's just custom firmware, and then we, we use, uh, we extend it just to EMI. Um, since QEMU, in QEMU you can you can pass a, a backing file for the memory, and we expose the disaggregated memory through a, a character device with uh, that supports the MF. So also, yeah, we do have a, a kernel module to provide this uh, this character device. Yeah, so that is the only change to the kernel we make. And then then you can have, can on, on both sides of the migration you know, use shared memory devices for uh, for the virtual machine memory and then the rest of the migration works basically out of the box. This should actually be doable without modification to the kernel at all using shared memory devices in QEMU and KVM. Uh, yeah. And you just, you can back that by, you know, a remote node uh, and bind everything to socket zero and have the memory on socket one if you wanted to increase the latency and change the bandwidth uh, to 50 model a CXL device, for example. I know some other people uh, have already done that to model CXL devices. Uh, I have a quick question, and I know we, we brought this up on the list uh, a little bit. Um, I was curious what your thoughts were about, and I know we have like two minutes left. Um, so the path by copy, uh, we're, we're moving from one host to another host, and that means the virtual, the physical address uh, uh, mappings are going to be different, at least in theory. Uh, there's no guarantee that that CXL memory is going to be mapped at the same physical address range. I was curious what your thoughts were uh, on how you might accomplish that. Yeah, and uh, that was the, um, so I guess to kind of scale it back um, uh, for just the, uh, the basic test of having, you know, uh, this, uh, running through KMU, uh, you can have those addresses match. And uh, uh, like we talked um, uh, on the mailing list, uh, the devices can um, actually present the same uh, mappings. Uh, but uh, as Jonathan pointed out, is that uh, you shouldn't rely on that. Um, and that you would need to make these uh, sort of adjustments uh, between the physical spaces. Um, and um, I, I don't, I haven't solved that problem yet. Um, and my first pass would have been to just make those in QMU match, uh, just so I can sort of validate uh, this approach uh, and then deal with these uh, uh, readjustments later. Uh, and I also uh, need to dig a little bit uh, uh, deeper into the CXL spec uh, to make sure I fully understand the issue. So sorry to uh, disappoint Gregory, um, but uh, I, I haven't uh, 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 figured uh, that out yet. There's uh, one more follow-up question, which is uh, for uh, moving the actual context, uh, the execution context of the VM from one host to the other, was the plan to use typical TCP or whatever interconnect, or were you going to use uh, DXL memory to actually move that context as well? So my, um, this may or may not be possible. Uh, so, uh, but my goal is to be able to um, pass that, that uh, through the CXL device um, <clears throat> uh, because uh, it, I, I think it, um, that can be achieved. Uh, that secondary uh, uh, portion of you know uh, clustering hypervisors or load balancing when you're running uh, X amount of vCPUs from one VM on hypervisor A and X number of vCPUs on hypervisor B kind of becomes uh, free. So uh, that, that's my sort of preferred method. Uh, but at this point in time, I, 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 I don't know yet whether uh, that will be possible or not. And if not, then uh, you know, we'll have to go the, the other route. So linking these two things together, if you were to dump it all to CXL memory, you could also dump the existing page table contents to CXL memory. Uh, along with the CXL base memory address of whatever memory you're using. And then on the other side, you can go through and fix up the page tables as needed. 
uh, and that would potentially solve the problem, right? I mean, you could do the, the transport of the, the, the context through any medium and do the exact same thing. Um, and going through the page tables is likely expensive, um, but that would be a first path uh, to fixing that, that general issue. Yeah, and that's for <clears throat> for pages, right? But not for uh, sub page allocations, uh, like uh, any kind of uh, kernel metadata structures or anything like yes. that. Yes. Yeah, that would be that. Yeah, that would be the. I would say yeah, the hard okay. part. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and that's that's kind of uh, also. <clears throat> uh, what I'm trying to figure out is, uh, you know, um, migrating the pages. Uh, will probably be the easiest one, but what do you do with like subpage allocations? Do you, uh, you know, do you move them across buckets or like, it, it's gonna be very difficult because um, I mean, these addresses could be anywhere. So um, that's that's the part that I am still uh, struggling with figuring out whether um, um, uh, this cooperation between the hypervisor happens on a page level or does it happen even on a smaller uh, level. I think I'm over time, but is there any other last question? Well, give me a little bit more time because we had trouble uh, getting you started. Uh, so we'll, we'll go to the 235 mark. Um, one observation is I don't see you asking for different ways to identify CXL memory. Like it seems like the current, in, in your, for this use case, are is it a correct observation that you don't need CXL nodes and these kinds of things? You can figure it out from the information that's currently available in the kernel. Um, uh, there is an so um, my goal is to have the um, switchable CXL memory devices be their own nodes, um, and then attached a, a, a separate sort of sub tag in SysFS. Um, uh, just for uh, the purposes of uh, migration and figuring out your your path uh, of migration. So if I um, uh, if I switch to this slide, this is in the extra slide. Um, um, the way I'm thinking of is um, you would have multiple um, uh, uh, um, CXL mem switch devices uh, connecting to various hypervisors, and uh, there would be some sort of um, um, application uh, on top sitting that would map out this uh, um, migration graph uh, and determine, uh, you know, which nodes you need to pass or if you want to quote unquote exit the, the main space and hop onto another rack, uh, you know, which node you have to go. I think, I think that's the end of our session. I think we lost you at the end, but um, but yeah, I think thank you, and I think we'll move on to the, the next session now. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks.